Listen, son. I'm saying this to you as you lie asleep. One little hand crumpled under your cheek. Blonde curls on your forehead. I've just stolen into your room alone. A few minutes ago, as I sat reading my paper in the den, a hot, stifling wave of remorse swept over me. I couldn't resist it, and guiltily I came to your bedside. These are the things I was thinking, son. I had been cross. I scolded you as you were dressing for school because you gave your face just a dab with a towel. I took you to task for not cleaning your shoes. I called out angrily when I found that you had thrown some of your things on the floor. And at breakfast, too, I found fault. You spill things. You put your elbows on the table. You spread butter too thick on your bread. As you started off to play and I made for my car, you turned and waved your little hand and called, Goodbye, Daddy. And I frowned and said in reply, Straighten your shoulders. And then it began all over again in the late afternoon. As I came up the hill, I spied you down on your knees playing marbles. There were holes in your stockings. And I humiliated you before your boyfriends by making you march ahead of me back to the house. Stockings are expensive, and if you had to buy them, you'd be more careful. <laughs> Imagine that, son, from a father. Such stupid logic. And do you remember later when I was sitting in the den, how you came in softly and timidly with sort of a hurt look in your eyes? And I glanced up over my paper, impatient at the interruption. You hesitated at the door. What is it you want, I snapped. You said nothing, but ran across in one plunge and threw your arms around my neck and kissed me. Again and again. And your small arms tightened with an affection that God had set blooming in your heart and which even neglect could not wither. And then you were gone, pattering up the stairs. Well, son, it was shortly afterward that my paper slipped from my hands, and a terrible, sickening fear came over me. Suddenly I saw my horrible selfishness, and I felt sick at heart. What was habit doing to me? The habit of complaining, of finding fault, of reprimanding. All of these were my reward to you for being only a small boy. It wasn't that I didn't love you. It was that I expected too much of youth. I was measuring you by the yardstick of my own age. And son, I'm sorry. I promise never to let my impatience, my nervousness, my worries ever again muddle or conceal my love for you.